Perfect. Okay, so uh, Luciano, you've been teaching uh, for a long time. You started uh, teaching at Art Center Europe from 91 to 94. Uh, you went to... The first year I sent to Europe on the weekends basis, every Saturday. Yeah. So I was traveling from uh, Torino. I was in Fiat at that time, by car, get to La Tour de Paix in Switzerland, and come back uh, in the evening or the Sunday morning. Oh, you're, you're comm commuting, wow. Yeah, commuting, yes. Then you were head of transportation design in 94 in Turin at the Institute of Heavy Design, yes. The, the, the transportation design department happened with me. I was the first chair and teacher with a small group of teachers that were basically also colleagues and friends, all coming from international design school. Um, you started at Renault in 2000, you said, uh, yes. and uh, were part of the design team that did the Tweezy, if I'm pronouncing that correct. Yeah, before in Fiat, I was uh, responsible and designer for the Fiat 600, a small car that uh, you will see a little picture afterward, done in Poland a long time ago. Now it looks like it's free a long time ago. And then when I moved to, uh, to Renault, I participated to lots of projects, but the most significant one are the Tweezy, one of the most recent ones that went into production as design manager. And then also the Kangoo 2, not the one that just came out today, but uh, the one before. Um, you also have a blog, LucianaBovi.com. You started that in 2006. And yeah. in 2012, you started your YouTube channel, which is now very popular. And in 2014, you officially dubbed everything Car Design Tips. And that is uh, now a well-known resource on the internet, on Instagram, YouTube, and also uh, teaching some courses uh, on the platform that I created uh, a couple of years ago. Yes. Um, and, and that was the first time we connected. Um, I, I love what you're doing. You have a very distinct style of sketching that I uh, value very much. And uh, that is also the topic that we just talked about today. These students are from Eindhoven, uh, Industrial Design at the uh, Technical University. Not all of them, by the way, are from the Industrial design department there are some who are taking different studies but they have taken this course which which is part of the industrial design program cool and this week the topic is uh, style um, so what we are really super interested in is um, to hear you talk about the uh, relevance of having a personal style maybe how you have developed your own style how you have developed that uh, I also have a question um, yes. You said that you spent quite some time, uh, like hour, more than an hour on a drawing, and uh, you add quite some details also in color. So I wondered, when do you know when your sketch is finished? That's a very good question, because usually designers, but I think also students, they never know when to stop. And when they start not stopping, that's when they, may, they mess out completely their work. So how do you know? Well, when you are young, you probably don't, unless you have a, such a high talent that you are sort of a Leonardo da Vinci of the new generation and say, I know, I stop now. You know, that's very hard. I learned, I learned with the time. For example, the big mistake a lot of people do, they put highlights all over. Because they like, everybody loves highlights. But so they, they start, and then when you look at the drawing, there are some birds, they were flying over, <laughs> they stopped, and they kept going, you know. <laughs> because when you put too much, it's not anymore highlights, it's dirt. So I teach always the highlights is only on the focal point. Why do we have a focal point? Because we want the eye to go there first. Because we drive the viewer, not the opposite. And we drive the viewer on our design with how we sketch and we color. So if in the center I have all the best part of my of my sketch, then it fades out a little bit in details on the sides. You know, when this happens, it's normal. Everybody are going to look the way it's more precise, more uh, sparkling, you know. So we have to learn what this, what does it mean for us to look every stage, every step of what we are doing and then go there and say, I stop for five minutes, I do something else, and I come back and watch it. So you have to take a moment where you say, let's do it step by step. Nobody's running after me. 
And then the way you take those steps, you do markers, all the marker, you check all the marker. Then you decide according to your focal point, if you have enough contrast between what is more interesting and what has to fade out. If you think it's okay, no more marker, stop it. Then you go with the highlights or with the, I used the, my pencil, you know, to clean up the lines after the marker, because you can erase the bleeding of the marker. <laughs> and that's another trick. So you go back and you do the line quality again, and you fix where maybe there is some bleeding. So after that, that's another step. You watch, and maybe you add a little bit of extra shading because you know that you see that the values, there's something that is not quite correct. Then you put the highlights. When you put the highlights, you put it only in your focal point, you know, only in that area where your eyes go there. So once you finish, you know that you don't have to put the highlights on the left and on the right. So then you wait. Wait one, uh, one hour, two hours. Then go back and you watch it. And then you ask yourself whether it's finished or you still need a little bit of extra or something. That's how I do. Learn when it's the time to decide because then you become a problem for the team. And that's it's a part of profession professionalism, you know, to learn and to accept that there is a moment where you say, stop. You know. And, and it's uh, you're right about the confidence that like you need to practice all of these things individually to build yeah. that confidence. Because like you said, if you spend one and a half hours on a sketch and you mess it up because you don't know what you're doing with the details, with, with the highlights. Uh, I was saying, like, is there any way we can uh, find uh, the people you were referring today uh, to, like somewhere, you know, even, uh, I don't know if it was anywhere in the presentation, but even like the... Uh, maybe your Instagram profile and uh, the. But I'll, I'll see uh, if I can gather some links for you and uh, share them. Yeah, I, I think that you should always watch Sidmid stuff, even if it's uh, it's retro futurism. But I think it's important, at least to know. Okay, at least to know, to watch to see his work in color in black and white. Then you can follow also for the way he sketches and also using Photoshop. Fabio Ferrante, Martin, probably you know him. No. Uh, I will write it in the chat. I will write his He's on Instagram. And he's also somebody that I spotted a long time ago. And now he's very successful. Fabio Ferrante. Another guy that is very good is Michele Leonello, who is a very good friend of mine. Another one that is very good is Leandro Trovati. He's a uh, uh, Brazilian. Okay, the, the guy that the figure drawing is Yoshi zero, one, two, three, four, five. Check this guy. This guy is a mas master, maestro. He's really incredible. Um, I have a question on. Uh, yes. Like your uh, routine. Do you warm up for sketching? Uh, how often do you practice? Um, do you start with just drawing ellipses or lines like that sort of stuff? Can you tell something about it? Yeah, uh, uh, the, the ellipses, uh, the lines, and the warm-up exercise with the circle is something I, I, I ask my, my students to do. I, I, I don't do that anymore, not for myself. It comes automatic that I have the right gesture. But one thing important, sketchbook. You know, your sketchbook has to be, you know, you have to, you have to so this is done with, uh, with a pen and a marker. Sketchbook. Okay. And this with no reference, I was just uh, sketching. Like this one, for example. Just pen a little bit of white wash. Yeah, Luciana, we just had a, a, earlier on uh, a question for discussion about uh, looking at other people's work on Instagram and how that can, can be um, uh, like demotivating in a way. Uh, and, and I said, I replied and I said, well, it's, it's the way you look at it and the way, the way what, you, what you do with it is what makes it um, either motivating or demotivating. And so the way I treat it, and I, I, I'm 
curious about your take, but I think it's very similar, is that you get inspired. You draw inspiration from what you see, and then you yeah. say, I want to try and do that or do something similar. Is that correct? Yeah, th there are two things that are very important. Please go and check my video, which is called Design Talk, Be Competitive, okay? That's the title. When you have time, it's a little bit long, you can skip it eventually, but it's a combination of two things. The inspiration, and if you are doing this job, if you if you are in school because you have a, you have been inspired to become a designer uh, uh, or doctors, but you don't get inspired to become a, a post office uh, I don't know cl uh, clerk you know employee. Uh, probably that guy or that girl it's working over there because that was the only choice and the only opportunity got uh, you know to do that job. But who is doing? particular type of niche uh, jobs or professions, it's because they are motivated from the inside. It's an inner thing that comes out. So that's the, the most important thing. But there's another one, which is competitiveness. Be competitive. How much do you really want that to be? I mean, do you really want to be the future next excellent uh, industrial designer? I don't want to say the top, but a very good industrial designer that you can open your own firm and just be have clients or maybe picked up by sony or startup and, and well paid because uh, in the average you stand out and therefore they take you because you are good then be demanding with yourself push yourself because those guys how good they are i will never be like that it's depressing forget it just go go to the post office i mean go do something else <laughs> But if you are there now, if you are connected here, you cannot think like that. You can't. It's forbidden. You have to push yourself. I, um, I watched a couple of talks. Um, I, I was at actually a lecture from uh, your boss, Laurent van, van den Acker. Yeah. And I, I remember him talking about the design process at Renault and at other companies that he worked at in the transportation design business. And I, I noticed that... Um, even within the company, within the, the design team, competition is used as a way to, to, uh, to get the best out of the, sure. uh, the, the individual designers. Yes. That, looking at that from an industrial design point of view, where I, I worked at various design firms, um, it is much more of a collaborative spirit. So at least the, the place where I worked, the designers worked together and they took each other's sketches and they they com complemented the work of the others. And, and then in, in the end, it was more like a team result than that. Uh, it, it wasn't like, oh, my sketch didn't get picked or uh, or his sketch got picked. It's more, But it's more like that in, in the transportation design, isn't it? Yes, transportation design, I would say that is the, the field where we put uh, the whole the how can i say there is a, a a view on the profession different from industrial design i i many people say i'm an industrial designer i want to, i'm passionate about cars i want to be a car designer and it's difficult for an industrial designer to become a real damn good car designer unless he was in industrial design because he could not afford to go to a car design school because very expensive, or because he discovered when he was there, like for example, Dar Darren Cadiz, that did the industrial design art center, and he became for 15 years one of the best car designers in interior. And then he went back to industrial design. Today he's a VP design of Plantronics in California, in San Jose, you know, and still sketching. He's a great artist, but this guy is a, such a talent. And he had the, the cars in, in his DNA, it's so versatile and we are the opposite we had to break the rules we had to break the rules and in my opinion you should break the rules too we have to break the rules because it's only breaking the rules that engineering researching and all that stuff innovation can move on the iphone with steve jobs stuff uh, great man but the key element of uh, of Apple is that they broke the rules. And look, all over the world is copying them. 
How many are able to break the rules the way they did today? Nobody yet. Yeah, I, I guess it, I guess I guess there's pros and cons to say uh, for both the, the, the approaches. Um, I mean, for for one, the, I I always enjoyed the the teamwork, the you know the trust that you get from teammates, and then um, yeah, stepping over your ego and saying, okay. Um, I see what you have done, and I'm going to incorporate some of that in my sketches, and together we're going to create something um, that is better than the sum of two, right? No, I, I understand that, but I don't want to be misunderstood. Maybe I explain myself not well enough. Um, I am somebody at work until today, and I touch uh, wood and iron, <laughs> very much respected because of... Uh, the way I interact with people. For me, teamwork is number one. I work with teams. I am the one that has to federate teams' position so mm -hmm. that everybody are in on to a win-win negotiation. And I am the referee in between. So I understand that. And that's very same. I said in my video, don't forget that your classmates, your, it's your friend, not your enemy. My, my colleague is my friend, it's not my enemy. But being demanding with yourself means that for yourself, you don't want to be sloppy. For yourself, you want to be like uh, ready to help the others. I don't want to say like a leader all the time because that, that case that would be too much, but take that initiative. Don't stay there just waiting and somebody knocks at your door. Because if you do like that, uh, uh, half of the day, you will be doing probably nothing. No, it's more than demanding onto yourself. The in, not against others but no no for yourself to push yourself to elevate yourself but one thing for sure is that somebody has to tell you they probably you don't know yet but you might be one of those that will stand out on crowd now how much willing are you to take that chance that challenge give you look at yourself in the mirror give yourself an answer am i gonna dance or not Come on, let's go and dance. <laughs> okay. May I ask one I more question? Anton, go ahead. Um, I was wondering, when you start a new design project, what kind of uh, constraints do you set yourself in the beginning? Let's say in cars, for example, is it, uh, do you set the specs for wheelbase or rear or front overhangs or things like this? And what is the most crucial dimension or proportion that uh, defines a car for you? When uh, we get a pro when we start a project, we have two phases. The first one, the first step is ideation. It's really free, no constraints at all, zero. Then we get the briefing, also the technical briefing that will give us the technical platform, the wheels, the the, the front overhang, the, the ergonomics, everything, and we have to put the dress. But it's not that simple because we will never accept that because the proportion will be wrong because there are engineers that did it and they will do they will replicate always the same scenario because it's a safe bet for them so we have to push them to change and how do we do it we sketch on top of those uh, constraints you know hard points and we show that if you take the wheel you move it five millimeters uh, in the back the, the, the rear wheel maybe five centimeters in the back. You put uh, that front overhang a little bit longer in the front, a shorter in the back, and you check with the crash test uh, rule that it's okay, and you make uh, a front uh, beam uh, uh, rounded, you know, in curvature and not straight, you can have a front end that is much more interesting and stuff like that, according to the sketches, then starts the classical process where designers get pissed at engineers and engineers get pissed to the artists. But the thing is that nobody wants to admit it, but it's the combination of this teamwork that makes uh, possible the born of a nice supercar, of a nice car, of a nice uh, even city car. I mean, the crazy. How do you think we did this? It's funny, I, I worked in uh, Chicago for a while at a design firm, uh, Sunberg Ferrar, and uh, there were the designers and the engineers, and, and I was working with two engineers, this is a real tra traditional design company. Um, 
and they were so completely different. Like one, I was always fighting with. Uh, he was uh, he, he he had an opinion about design, and so he was always asking me, "Why do you want, why do you want the the surface like that? I I think it looks better like this." And I'm like, "Well, I I created design because I think it looks better like that." And it was always a a fight. And I, I agree, you have to develop. Uh, the skills to win that fight, to to defend your design, uh, which is uh, a skill in itself. But there was another engineer who was completely the opposite, and um, he would he would create the CAD model based on my sketches, and then he would he would call me and say, "Can you check if it feels yeah, right?" Good approach. And, yeah, and then uh, I would say, hmm, "Hmm, hmm, I think it should be more." And I tried to express what I thought, and then he said he gave me a pen, and he said draw the curve on my screen. <laughs> and I literally had to draw the curve on his screen and he would then model the curves uh, based on what I'd drawn on, on his screen. So there, there's two extreme ends of, all right, so it's been uh, almost two hours. So th thank you very much, uh, Luciano. My pleasure, my pleasure. It was our pleasure to have you you're here. And uh, yeah, I think it was, it was super nice to hear you talk about style and, and see your uh, examples and, uh, and the discussion at the end. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Be strong, be good, and be very creative. Okay, don't forget that. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs>